Are we allowed to talk about that? Because I heard a little. Yeah. I heard. I heard some rumors that you two didn't get along. What was? Yeah. I heard. I heard Richard was coaching you at a certain time, and then he'd coach you know Jenny at a different time, and and you you two didn't talk. And then the the crazy thing is you end up being on on the on the podium at the Sydney Olympics, sharing the, what the bronze medal in the hundred freestyle, right? Yeah, it was uh, it was kind of crazy. So what happened was um, I I had talked to Richard about coming out. He's like, let me talk to the team and see what they say. So he called me back like a few days later and said, they'd love to have you out. I'm like, great. So within two weeks of having this thought in my head and in going for an Olympic team after seven years off, I, I literally was out in California actually living with Jenny the first week. And oh. it was right before, um, I think it was World Champs in, in Australia in 99, summer of 99. And um, so I got out there and, I, and Ross Geary was... Richard's assistant coach, as was Jason Turcotte. And um, Richard went with, after about a week of being there, Rick, or maybe it was two weeks, I don't know, but Richard went to Australia with Jenny just from, so she, she was coaching and um, the, the team, the world championship team, and she was obviously swimming there. And when, when I had first met Jenny, we were on a relay together in 92 and she was supposed to have a great Olympics, Olympic trials and didn't do as well as she was supposed to. And then I retired for those seven years and that's when she really started to swim fast. So right. we really ne never swam against each other like when we were both at our peak. Mm -hmm. And um, so I come in and I start training and then Richard leaves and then and Jenny left with him. And then Jenny took about three weeks off after, stayed in Australia, traveled a little bit and then came back. And in those like five, six weeks that they were gone, um, I started to just started to just pick up and I started feeling right. good. And it felt like, oh, this is like riding a bike. And so when she came back, uh, she started to train and I was basically beating her in practices and she was not happy. And then I kept, just kept getting faster and faster. We went to swim meets, went to one just, you know, I don't know, random swim meet. Uh, I think it was like in Maryland or something. And then we went to a U.S. Open. Uh, I think it was in San Antonio. And I swam really well there. And then from there, we continued on as a team, Stanford team to um, the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. And while I was there, Jenny was so upset. And also, uh, let me just give a little background too. I would always go to Richard's office before uh, practice because I'm the type of person that I don't like surprises. I don't do well with surprises. I get very pissed off with surprises. Right. So I wanna know what practice is. Like, tell me what it is. I can like get ready for it and I can go. Like, I don't like to not know what's in practice. And so I'd go to his office every day before we train and talk to him and he'd tell me what practices and stuff. And I'd do that. And then afterwards I'd stay after practice and work with them. And, and the other kids knew that, Jenny knew that. And I don't think they liked it. They never really said anything, but I guess it kind of resentment built up over time. And so by the time we got to the Olympic Training Center, they basically had a meeting without me and as a, as a team without Richard, without me, and then approached Richard before practice at one of the practices and said, we don't want Dara on the team anymore. Uh, mm. she just, she's a distraction and you're paying too much attention to her and not to us. And so they basically kicked me off the team. I had to leave the Olympic, the Olympic training center. Wow. I had to stay in a hotel. I flew back like when I could get my first flight out uh, to Stanford. I called Mark Schubert, asked if I, he was at USC at the time, asked if I could uh, train with him. He said, we'd love to have you. I told him what happened. And literally as I was packing over those few days, Richard called me and said, have you left? I said, no. He's like, I want to talk to you. I said, okay. So we went to meet like a day before my flight. And he said, I think we can work this out. I said, Richard, I, I don't want to train with you anymore. I said, you know, you took a side. You could have stood up and, and said, look, you guys can go and, and talk to me before practice. You can work with, you know, me with your starts and turns after practice, you know, but you just went along with it. And I understand you're, you're the head coach and, um, you know, you have these these college kids that they still have NCAs coming up, and I get that. But you know, you didn't you didn't really stand up for me, and and I really don't feel like staying. It's like, well, listen, if I can work it out where I can train you on your own, and possibly you can train with Santa Clara, you know, with Jokums and um, and John Bitter, uh, you know, would you do that? And I said, well, let me just think about it. And he's like, I think this would be very good for you, Dara, because I can train you like four or five workouts one on one. Um, you know, and then you can train with the guys team, which I love. I mean, I learned really quickly. It's not easy training with women with women. You got to kind of yeah. mix it up with the guys. Yeah. Yeah. And so I thought about it a little bit and I said, okay, I'll do that. I called Mark up and said, 
you know, we work something out. He said, that's fine. And I train with him. And as that was happening, I was getting faster and faster. Um, and so it kind of backfired on Jenny that he thought, she thought that he kicked me off the team for good, but didn't realize that on his own time, he can do what he wants. And so he trained me. Wow. Yeah. It's an incredible yeah. story. But, uh, I, guess, I guess it worked out in the end for, for you in, in terms of what you did at Sydney Olympics. I mean, you had a phenomenal Olympics as well, but was it awkward being on the medal stand with her at that time? Yeah, I, I, everything was awkward. You know, um, they tried to sort of keep us apart. Like I obviously was pissed off about it. Like, how can you not be, but I'm not going to be mean. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm, I'm still a very nice person and you know, I kind of understand why she did what she did, but I also don't understand, like, it's kind of, you can see both sides of the coin. It, it was hard because we go to practice and it really was like an Olympic final, every practice racing each other. And that wasn't conducive for me or for her. So I, I kind of understood that, but the way it went about was very mean and, and ill will. And, um, you know, I got the okay to come out there and it just, it just, it was tough. And so we got to Olympic trials. I don't think she swam the 50. I'm not sure if she did, but I won that event. And she, I played second to her at every event that we swam the 50, the 100, I mean, the 100 free and the 100 fly at trials. And so we had to sort of put everything aside and be able to, um, you know, swim in, in, in relays together and swim against each other. And it's funny because I remember seeing the video of the 100 freestyle and, um, I just couldn't believe that we trained, but I was okay with it. And the look on her face was just pure disgust. And when we got into the um, the room where we're supposed to walk up, you know, onto the podium, yeah. uh, uh, Inga de Braun came up to me and said, I want you to stand next to me, not Jenny. And I was like, all right. Because, you know, it was really just Inga and Jenny and I, and that was it. And we had to share right. the podium. And then I remember about a month or two later, uh, Mark Spitz called me and said, hey, you know, I know who won your tie. I'm like, how do you know? And he said, it was like a random call. It's not like I talked to Mark Spitz all the time. It was just a random call. And um, I said, how do you know? He's like, I was sitting at the Omega timing table and they told me like who won. And I said, well, how do you know? And he said, well, the timing system only goes to a hundredth of a second and the actual computer goes to like a thousandth or ten thousandth or whatever it is wow. and he said so the name that actually pops up on the board first is the person who actually won and he goes your name popped up first i'm like sweet so i never said anything <laughs> to anyone for like years about that but the the funny thing is when we went to olympic trials in 2008 she was giving the medal for the hunter freestyle and no one expected me to win the hunter freestyle nor did i expect to win and I won and she had to give me the medal. It was just oh, so God. awkward, you know? It was oh, just wow. Awkward. Yeah. So. so there hasn't been, I guess there hasn't been any water under the bridge type moments for you guys then. Well, you know what? I sent her, her mom passed away from, from cancer, I believe. And I sent her a, a card, a, a, you know, a, um, condolence card to her. Right. She never said anything, never said anything after I saw her, but you know, I think we're okay. There's no, I mean, she's a mom i'm a mom you know i think if we see each other it would probably be fine it was never like we would see each other and like walk the other way it just wasn't super friendly yeah i got gotcha. you right. look i'm not judging look i coached i coached caesar Ciela to an olympic gold medal in 2008 in the 50 freestyle and and he won't come on my podcast because he felt at that time i was coaching Fred Bousquet, who was one of the top swimmers in the world as well. And and right. I had a very similar dynamic where each one of them felt like I favored the other person or what have you. So there's still there's still emotions built up. And I guess maybe that's just a sprinter thing. Yeah, you know, sprinters hang on to things and there's this lot of I thought it was a female thing. So I guess it might be a female sprinter. I don't know. It could be whatever it is. It's it's all in the same basket. But yeah, it's I get it. So 